Welcome to my channel. In this video, we will discuss discrete time convolution. Now consider one system, this one, and we will consider this system as a discrete system, meaning it will accept discrete input x of n and it will produce corresponding discrete output y of n. And this discrete system here will consider LTI meaning linear time invariant or it is also called linear shift invariant. So in discrete domain sometimes we are calling it LSI linear shift invariant. I hope you, have, you know what is the meaning of linearity and time invariant. So in my previous lectures I have discussed LTI system in detail. Now, in this input, if we apply one in unit impulse input that is denoted by del of n, and this del of n is defined as del of n is basically its name is Kronecker delta function. This name is coming from the scientist. Leopold Kronecker and its value is 1 del of n equal to 1 for n equals to 0 and otherwise it is 0. So only at origin n equal to 0 its value is 1. So this kind of unit impulse input is applied to system and that time the system will produce corresponding output that notation will use h of n so this output is called impulse response because this is the response due to this unit impulse signal. Thus H of N is called unit impulse response. Now if this H of N is provided for one discrete system, then for any arbitrary input X of N, we can compute corresponding output N from this x of n and h of n only. There is no need to provide one specific relation between input and output by some differential equation or other things. Okay, so this is one advantage that if the impulse response is provided for a system, then we can compute the output y n for any input x of n by just taking convolution between input signal and h of n. So here the star denotes convolution operator. And this yn is given by this summation x of k h of n minus k. Okay, and k is dummy parameter here. And k will vary from minus infinity to infinity. All integers we can consider. Right? So this is your relation. Now in this video, we will try to understand this relation. We will try to drive this relation. Okay. And also we will consider few examples to understand this convolution operation. Okay. So let us start. Now we will start with discrete sequence first. So consider one example, x of n. Suppose this x of n is having these four elements minus 1, 5, 3 and minus 2 and I have given one arrow here. So this is a notation. This, this is a curly bracket. Within curly bracket you will find some sequence and you will consider the arrow. And arrow indicates that this is the position, 0 position, origin. Means the x of 0 is 5. When n equal to 0, then the value of x is 5. So this is the indication for this arrow. Okay. So this is your x of 0. So with respect to this one, if this is the next element 3. So this is x of 1 and this one is x of 2. Right. And similarly the left hand side, it should be negative. n is negative. 
it's x of minus 1. So this is x of 0, x of 1, x of 2 like that, right side, and left side x of minus 1, x of minus 2, x of minus 3 like that. Okay, so this is one sequence I have considered, full length sequence. And now I want to plot it. So this is a in x axis is n axis. See this is a discrete. So it will take to accept only the integers 0, 1, 2 up to infinity that side, and this side 0, minus 1, minus 2 up to minus infinity. Okay. So at 0, you see its value is 5 that I have shown here by this distance, this in this vertical line, this magnitude is 5. And then this at 1, it is 3, at 2, it is minus 2, and at minus 1, it is minus 1. So I have shown all the four elements here, and rest are all zeros, right? Now, I will consider each sample in one figure, okay? Suppose this one, this minus one, I have shown here only, the rest are all zeros. And that I will consider one signal. So the signal contains only one sample. Similarly, this one x2, it contains only this five, sample number five, okay? And its position was at zero, okay? Then this one is here, x of three. And this one is x of 4. So these four signals we will consider and each signal will contain only one sample. Okay. Now how to represent these signals using Konecker delta functions. So you know that Konecker delta is having only single value del of n equals to 1 at n equal to 0. Otherwise it is 0. Okay. So the same thing. So you see this x2 of n, so it is having one, only one sample at 0 and value is 5. So amplitude is 5, so it, it is similar to delta n, but amplitude is 5. Thus, we can write that x2 of n equals to 5 times del of n. Because only n equal to 0, it is having this sample and its magnitude is 5, right? Similarly, x3 of n, it is having the amplitude 3 at n equal to 1. So the del of n should be shifted to right side. So it should be del of n minus 1. Okay, the, that is the position. So we can write x3 of n equals to amplitude is 3 and it is del of n minus 1. This is because this del of n minus 1 will be 1 only for n minus 1 equal to 0, that means n equal to 1. So at n equal to 1, its value is, this value is 1, so 1 into 3 is 3, otherwise all values are zeros. Similarly, this one, it is at position 2, so obviously it should be del of n minus 2, but amplitude is minus 2, so it should be minus 2 times del of n minus 2. Similarly for this one. Now you see it is on left hand side at minus 1. So it should be del of n plus 1. You see, so you will put this in other one, this argument, this n plus 1 equals to 0, and you will solve for that. The value is n equal to minus 1. So at n equal to minus 1, its value is 1. Okay, and its magnitude is now multiplied by minus 1. So this is the signals. Now this x of n. All elements I have considered individually here. Now if I add all those things, then obviously we will get this total signal x of n. Because they will not interfere each other's. Their locations are different. When this x1 is present, then others are absent. Similarly, when x2 is present, others are absent. Right? So we can combine all the four signals to get this total x of n. Thus we can write x of n equals to x1 n plus x2 of n plus x3 of n plus x4 of n. Okay, because x1 of n will give you this element, then x2 of n will give you the next one like that. Okay, and so this one we can replace, says, you see, the x1 is replaced by minus 1 times del of n plus 1, 
this is 5 times del n, this one is 3 times del n minus 1 and this one is minus 2 times del of n minus 2. Okay. Now, so we have already obtained these things. This xn we can express in this form. It's summation of the delta functions with some shift, right? So th this will realize. So we can have some realization for this discrete sequence x of n. We want to express x of n, any kind of x of n, uh, in a summation of Kronecker delta functions. So what we will do? At 0, if its value is x of 0, that time we should multiply del of n. It indicates that at n equal to 0, its value is x of 0. Similarly, right side at n equal to minus n equal to 1, means del of n minus 1, value is x of 1. So right side I can put it in that way. So x of 1 times del of n minus 1, then x of 2 times del of n minus 2, like that. Similarly for left hand side, x of minus 1 del of n plus 1, x of minus 2 times del of n plus 2, like that. So you can notice here that when this value is x of 1, it is del of n minus 1. When it is x of 2, del n minus 2. So if it is x of k, it should be del of n minus k. That is the element. Okay, x of k, del of n minus k, then we can add all the corresponding elements. Thus, we can write this x of n in a compact form like this. If it's x of k times del of n minus k, and k can vary from minus infinity to infinity, depending on the presence of input signal. Okay? The non-zero values of x of n. That only we can consider. If it is finite length, then obviously this k range will be finite. If it is infinite length, it can go to infinity. Right? Okay. Suppose this one, previous one, x of n, it is only four length. So I, here I can consider a k equals to minus 1 to 2. That only the four lengths. That's sufficient. Okay? Right. Now, we will consider the discrete system, this LSI system, linear shift invariant system. Now here, if we apply delta n, then corresponding output impulse response is del of n, h of n, that is suppose provided, this given. So for the system, impulse response is known. Now for any input x of n, we want to find out corresponding output y of n. So for this input signal x of n, we need to find out corresponding output y of n. So what is the expression for this y of n? That we want to compute. And remember, we have considered only LSI system or LTI system. This is valid only for this linear shift invariant or linear time invariant system. Otherwise, it is not true. Right? Whatever we are going to discuss now. So, first step. So, this is already provided. If I apply del n to the system, then corresponding output is h of n. This is known. Okay. Now, if we have a shift of this input signal, instead of del of n, if I consider del of n minus k, k could be any one parameter, one value. It could be 1, could be 2, could be 5, could be minus 10, anything. Okay. So, del of n minus k, this is one delayed or advanced depending on n. If, sorry, k. If k is positive, then it's a delayed signal. If k is negative, then it's a advanced signal. Okay. So, this del of n, output is h of n del of n minus k, the corresponding output would be h of n minus k for this system because system is time invariant. If system is time invariant or shift invariant, then if you have on delayed input, then output is also delayed by same factors or same time, same samples here. 
okay so input sam input is delayed by k sample so output is also delayed by k sample now if i multiply with this signal by one constant suppose x of k x of k could be any constant it is independent of small n okay so this is function of k that could be so for any value of k so here i can put that corresponding suppose if it is if i consider del of n minus 2 i can consider x of 2 and x of t is 2 is one fixed value so that fixed value x of k if i multiply with the signal x of del of n minus k then the corresponding output should be similar to h of n minus k but it should be again multiplied by same factor x of k because the system is said that it is linear as system is linear if i multiply one factor a with the signal x of n the output is also multiplied by same factor a so in this case the factor a is nothing but x of k so x of k is multiplied here it is also multiplied here because system is linear now this k can be anything okay different k we can consider k could be 0 could be 1 could be 2 okay so we'll get different signals with different weightage so this we can also call weight right so different signals and different corresponding outputs now if we sum it up all the different signals if i consider summation x of k del of n minus k k is from minus infinity plus infinity then the output also the summation of all previous output or corresponding outputs so these are the corresponding outputs x of k h of n minus k so here also we need to take summation because system is again linear if it is linear then superposition principle is true thus if we have more than one input signal so if we combine those signals by additions then output corresponding outputs also also added same this thing we have used here only now you can see the left hand side x of k del n minus k what is this already we have derived so this representation x of k del of n minus k you see this del of n minus k one indicator function the position indication and this these are the sample values so this will give you total sequence x of n so this is left hand side is nothing but x of n so as this left hand side is x of n so what about we have got at the output side we will call it y of n so for this x of n i have one corresponding output y n and that relation is x of k h of n minus k that for dark and then we need to take summation for all case k equal to minus infinity to plus infinity so this is the relation y n equals to this one and this formulation is called convolution between x of n and h of n okay so you will get a function of n only at the end but here we have one dummy parameter the k k will vary from minus infinity plus infinity when first we need to take product of this two then we will need to sum it up all the elements okay now i'll take few simple examples consider one example h of n equals to two times del of n if it is so then what is the corresponding output for any input signal x of n okay so now what and what is the meaning of this system if h of n is two times del of n right that we want to understand now we can use this formula this convolution relation so this y of n we can write x of k h of n minus k k equal to minus infinity infinity in this case h of n is given by 2 times del of n so h of n minus k it should be 2 times del of n minus k so that i have replaced here 2 times del of n minus k now this 2 is outside 
right and this is your del of n minus k now you see this one this is x of k del of n minus k it's summation all summations now what is this this is the representation of x of n only right so this is your two times of x of n right and now we can show you that this result will get from the system only so you see the system if i consider one lsi system here and h of n is given that two times of del of n and we understand it is a impulse response meaning the input signal is del of n so if we apply del of n then out corresponding output is two times of del of n so if input is del of n output is two times of del of n what is the meaning so whatever signal is input the output is the same signal only two times multiplication thus so if i apply xn input i should get two times of that input at the output side so x of n if i apply output should be two times of x of n so if h of n is two times of del of n it imply it is an amplifier because output is amplified version of input only by two times so this is an amplifier of the so if h of n is given in this form some constant times of del of n it is nothing but one amplifier okay next if h of n equals to del of n minus 3 again same logic so this is the corresponding output so if i apply del n to a system we are getting del of n minus 3 so this is a delayed output i can say okay so if i apply xn its output should be x of n minus 3 so it's a delay system so in this case the output is delayed by three samples now if i consider h of n equals to half of del n plus del of n minus 1 with the same logic so if i apply del n at the input that this is the corresponding output so if i apply xn then del should be replaced by x no so del n x we are replacing del by x so everywhere in del it should be replaced by x so if h of n is given particularly in form of del of n or del of n minus 1 n minus 2 all those things the function of del of n then easily we can extend the corresponding output in the form of xn just we need to replace del by x so corresponding output is y of n equal to half of this is x of n plus x of n minus 1 so what this is the current sample x of n at n this is the current sample and this is x of n minus 1 it's the previous sample okay so at n this is the current sample this is the previous sample you will add this two and you will divide by two what is the meaning this is the average of two successive samples so this is the system output so at the output of system you will find average of two successive samples so we can compute this output if sequence is given now take one example so this is our, that system this system half of del n plus del of n minus 1 and this is the this is one sequence okay then we need to find out what is the corresponding output y n so y of n so at 0 at 0 it is given 5 so what will be corresponding output at 0 means y of 0 so at at 0 its value is x of x of 0 is 5 so i have said that this system is one so uh, average it will compute the average of two successive samples one is current sample and other one is previous sample so its current sample is 5 and its previous sample is 2 so 5 plus 2 is 7 and its average means 
7 by 2 is 3.5. So at 0, the y of n should be 3.5 because 5 plus 2 by 2. Right? Similarly, at this place, one place, what is the average value? 1 plus 5 by 2 means 1 plus 5 is 6, 6 by 2 is 3. Similarly, at 2, 0 plus 1 by 2 means 1 by 2 means 0 0.5. This is 4 at this place. 4 plus 0 by 2 means 2. So, but again, we should go beyond that because this side is next element is 0. That also we need to consider. So, 0 plus 4 by 2 is 2. So, one more 2 will get. So, be careful because of this response. Okay, because in the previous sample will contribute some things. So, you see at n equal to 4, the input signal is absent, x of 4 is 0, but y of 4 we will get and y of 4 equal to 2. It is because of this part. Right? And similarly, left hand side we can consider, but left hand side is fine. So, this 2 at 2, this 1, this position at n equal to minus 1, this value is 2. So, 2 plus 1 by 2 is 1.5. At this position, n equal to minus 2, it is 1 plus 0 by 2 is 0.5. Okay, so this is your y of n, right. Now I will consider one more example, h of n equals to u of n and u is unit step sequence. Okay, so what is the corresponding output x of n and what is the system? Can you identify the system characteristics, right? So we know that y n is given by this one. This convolution x of k u of n minus k k equals to minus infinity to infinity and this h is now replaced by u of n minus k right so this function is step function and you know that step function value is 1 if this argument is positive or 0 more than equal to 0 so when this will be 1 so, when k is less than equal to n, then only it will be positive, small n, small n is given, so k value we can vary, so, so this k will depend on small n, when small n, sorry, this k, small k is less than equal to small n, then this value will be positive, then u of n minus k is 1 means k equals to minus infinity to n that range u of n minus k is 1 that we are going to consider so it's not that it will go up to infinity for infinity it will go up to small n only be careful here i am saying that u of n minus k is 1 if n minus k is more than equal to 0 that implies k is less than equal to small n so, k will vary from minus infinity to small n. So, you see, minus infinity to small n, x of k and this one. So, it is simply summation of x of k, k equal to minus infinity to infinity. So, all previous samples, we need to sum it up. We need to accumulate it. Okay. Thus, this system is called accumulator. It will accumulate all the previous samples up to the current sample n okay so this is one accumulator and in time domain similarly you will get so if you consider h of t equal to u of t then corresponding output y t you will see that it is the integration that is the integrator in time domain it is integrator in discrete domain it is called accumulator okay so we will continue this discussion we will give you more examples, we will show you some graphical methods and tabular methods to compute this convolution process in some videos, next future videos. So here I will give you one small homework problem.
can you compute this convolution u n and u n conversion between u n sequence and again u with u n sequence so you can take help of the previous example so try to find out this output and write your answer in the comment sections okay and if you think that this video is useful to you you may press the like button and if you have not yet subscribed this channel and if you want to receive the future videos similar kind of videos then you can subscribe it i'll be uploading lots of videos in this channel so thanks for watching we'll discuss next topic in next video thank you